These are the faces of our times. Different faces with one thing in common. They're all looking for work and better living standards. I'm a 20-year-old student and my future's at stake. I definitely feel like I'm out there on my own. It's hard to know kind of where to go. Oh, it's been really bad because it really knocks you down. The statistics are staggering. Unemployment is the highest it's been in decades and has reached record levels. The hardest hit are the most vulnerable, youth and unskilled workers. Even before the crisis, youth have more trouble finding jobs. Historically, youth unemployment rate has been two to three times higher than for older groups. Youth unemployment has risen sharply in advanced economy, approaching 20%, and is likely to remain high for some time as these economies slowly recover. Well, I've applied for so many sports type of jobs, but none of them are good enough. I'm never good enough for them kind of jobs. Not being able to find that first job and keeping it has long-term effects on young workers. These days, two out of every ten unemployed youth in advanced economies have been looking for a job for over a year. Bonnie speaks from experience. She has a degree, but has been looking for full-time work with a salary. It doesn't matter what degree you had, how much experience you had, just nobody's, there's no doors opening for any of the people that are graduated. Um, a lot of my friends are doing voluntary work, um, working in shops and they, they do have um, degrees in like history and arts and interior design but it's just even law as well but there just aren't the jobs to, to fulfil. Even those um, that find jobs are more, more vulnerable to losing them than older workers. They have less work experience less knowledge of how and where to look for a job, and fewer job search contacts. They also tend to have, uh, to lack the skills that employers need, often because of education systems that are not sufficiently uh, integrated with the job market. Addressing the mismatches between skills and what the employers need is critical since research shows that the longer a person is unemployed, the more the chances that he or she might be discouraged and drop out of the workforce altogether. And this can have costs for successive generations. Because you apply but they don't get back to you. So, to, so you start thinking to yourself, why should you apply if no one's going to get back to you? Now that's a massive economic cost, costing the state tens of millions of pounds a week in terms of benefits and lost productivity. But there's also a huge emotional impact and many young people have simply given up hope of ever finding work. Prolonged unemployment increases the chances of subsequent unemployment, which in turn reduces future earnings and increases the risk of poverty and health problems. It can also lead to a vicious cycle of intergenerational poverty and social exclusion. We are the 99%. We are the 99%. At the same time as we've seen prolonged youth unemployment, income inequality has also been rising. Youth unemployment contributes significantly to income inequality, widening the gap between the rich and the poor. The longer the unemployment duration, the higher the income inequality because of um, larger income losses associated with extended period of unemployment. In the United States alone, statistics show that in the last 30 years, the top 1% doubled its share in national income, while those in the middle have seen their incomes fall. I am the 99%. I am a student who is struggling to pay his loans. I am the 99%. I am the person who has both parents unemployed and hopeless. In Europe, the story is not that different. Although it varies from country to country, the overall numbers of unemployment and the increase in income inequality are pretty grim. The highest increase was witnessed in Spain, where youth unemployment doubled from less than 20% to 40%. This was due to the fact that half of the young Spanish workers held temporary contracts before the crisis and were among the first fired. Growing and persistent unemployment, income inequality and lack of opportunity has given rise to tensions around the world, causing social unrest and alienation. On December 17, 2010, 
Tunisia's Mohamed Bouazizi set himself on fire. The unemployed One young man in Tunisia, an educated young man, a graduate, couldn't get a job, was plying his uh, livelihood on the streets and a government who didn't realise how deeply felt the anger of people was. That spark, the suicide out of desperation, drove a nation to respond. A spark that started a global movement which led people to seek out a fairer system and more jobs. There is a real concern now that the crisis will leave behind uh, a lost generation of youth uh, with slimmer long-term opportunities and that can have damaging economic consequences. Unless you actually put employment with decent jobs, decent work, wages that are affordable, you're going to see a, a stagnation of living standards, a decline in people's opportunities but also their capacity to play into markets with the demand that's necessary to continue growth. Although each country has its unique problems, studies have shown that investment in infrastructure, health, education, job creation and technology is essential. And for those who remain unemployed, benefits and welfare payments targeted to protect the most vulnerable is critical. The energy, skills and aspiration of youth are invaluable assets that no society can afford to waste. Action is needed now to avoid the crisis scarring the hopes of an entire generation. Therefore, it's important to introduce policies that enhance the skills and capabilities of youth and assist them in joining the job market as quickly as possible. There are lots of people all over the world who worry, who wonder, who are concerned about their future, who are concerned about the future of their children, and they look at us for solutions. My message to you is that we need to act now, and we need to act together. Thank you.